in high definition. From the area's most experienced news team, this is NBC 29 HD News at 11. Sometimes everything just feels so like overwhelming, like you can run as hard as you, as fast as you can, but you can't get away from it. Like, you know, and I was like, and sometimes I feel like that, like I can never get away from it. That is the voice of a young woman known only as Jackie in the printed pages of Rolling Stone magazine. Tonight, for the first time, we are hearing an audio recording played in the defamation trial against the magazine and the author of that now retracted article about a gang rape at the University of Virginia. Thanks for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Matt Tallhelm. The author of that article spent a fourth day on the stand testifying today. Lawyers on both sides of the defamation case were in federal court in Charlottesville on this Saturday trying to get the case back on schedule. UVA Administrator Dean Nicole Aramo is suing. Today, journalist Sabrina Erdely continued to lay out and defend her reporting process. Erdely recalled the night she, Jackie, and others walked past the Phi Kappa Psi fraternity where the alleged assault happened. Erdely said Jackie had a breakdown, adding that the reaction was genuine, but now it confuses her. NBC 29 obtained a copy of a two hour, 25 minute audio recording of a dinner between Erdely and the UVA student at the center of that article. It was played in its entirety in the courtroom and during the casual chat, Jackie talks about her alleged rape and describes her relationship with Dina Ramo. Take a listen, it's all new at 11. I probably didn't know him well enough to go up to his room, you know. That's the voice of Jackie a young woman that up until now existed only as a name in print in Rolling Stone magazine's article, A Rape on Campus. Jackie described to reporter Sabrina Erdley being raped by several men inside an upstairs room at the Phi Kappa Psi fraternity. I always have like a very similar nightmare of walking up to that room and it's like, I'm going, but I'm telling myself not to. The jury in a defamation lawsuit filed by former University of Virginia Dean Nicola Ramo against the magazine, its publisher, and Erdley listened to this two-hour recording of a dinner between Jackie and the reporter. They discuss naming the fraternity in the article. I feel like if we can get these guys, we should. You know what I mean? Because, like, we have a chance to, like, do something important and make a difference. Jackie talks about her relationship with Aramo. I don't want to get Tina Ramo in trouble because I love her. She claims Aramo told her an infamous line printed in that now retracted article. She like looked at me very like solemnly and was like, well, who would want to send their daughter to the rape school? Jackie described to Erdely the motivation behind wanting to share her story with the magazine, calling sexual assault a cycle of silence at the university. UVA has kind of flown under the radar for so long, and I was like, and I feel like someone has to say something about it, or else it's just going to be this system that keeps perpetuating. Jackie is not expected to take stand in the trial. Instead, Arama's attorneys plan to play her videotaped deposition when court resumes on Monday. To the decision 2016 race for the White House tonight, the candidates are rallying support in battleground states with a little more than two weeks left before Election Day. Today, Donald Trump laid out his vision for his first 100 days in office. NBC's Chris Pallone has the latest from the campaign trail. It was billed as a policy speech. Donald Trump in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, laying out his agenda for his presidency's first 100 days. But like all Trump speeches, it touched on a wide range of topics from the leadership of Abraham Lincoln. It is my hope that we can look at his example to heal the divisions we are living through right now. To making Mexico pay for a border wall. Remember, I said Mexico's paying for the wall. Trump once again mentioned the women who have come forward to accuse him of inappropriate touching or kissing. He's now threatening to sue them. The events never happened, never. All of these liars will be sued after the election is over. All of this happening as an 11th accuser came forward Saturday in Los Angeles. If Mr. Trump thought that such bullying tactics would silence his accusers and prevent other women from coming forward, he will be sorely disappointed. The Clinton campaign, which polls show winning or within the margin of error in every swing state, is trying to run out the clock. Clinton is in Pittsburgh campaigning with her running mate Tim Kaine for the first time in six weeks, making an appeal to voters wavering in their support for Trump. You probably know people who are 
thinking about voting for Donald Trump. I understand that they need a president who cares about them, will listen to them, and I want to be their president too. With early voting already underway in 34 states for Clinton and Trump, time is running short. Chris Pallone, NBC News. Donald Trump continued on the campaign trail in Virginia Beach this afternoon. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani introduced the Republican presidential candidate to a crowd at a rally at Regent University. Trump's visit comes a week after reports that his campaign had pulled out of Virginia to focus resources on more competitive swing states. Miley Cyrus canvassed for Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton in Northern Virginia this afternoon. The singer and entertainer went door to door in the dorms at George Mason University. She talked to students about the high stakes in this election, especially for millennial voters. Cyrus has previously spoken out about LGBTQ rights, gender equality, and the environment. NBC 29 covering Virginia tonight. People all across the Commonwealth cleaned out their medicine cabinets for today's drug take back day. Law enforcement agencies, including here in Waynesboro, set up sites for people to drop off expired or unwanted prescription drugs. The event offers people a safe way to dispose of those legal drugs, no questions asked. Anytime that people have drugs that they're stockpiling at home because they don't know what to do with, they don't want to, again, throw them away, dispose of them improperly, this is a good opportunity for them to kind of clear out that medicine cabinet. The site in Waynesboro expected to collect more than a quarter ton of medicines. The drugs will be taken to the Drug Enforcement Agency to be burned. Law enforcement in Louisa County is working to improve its relationship with the people they are sworn to protect. Today, officers and deputies met with community members to listen to some of their concerns. NBC 29's Victoria Rezolo is there. She has a story now live from our newsroom. Good evening, Victoria. Good evening, Matt. Well, tensions are running high across the country between communities and police officers. However, people in Louisa County that live there say that's not the case. We are more alike. That's the main message the Louisa County president of the NAACP is hoping people take away from Saturday's Community Strong event. Trust each other, to believe in each other, to have confidence in each other, to become my brother's keeper, my sister's keeper. Jones teamed up with local law enforcement who say protecting the community is not about the color of your skin. When I cut my finger, I believe just like the other person uh, in the community cuts their finger. When they mash their hand, it bruises up just like mine. It doesn't make any difference about the color. Town Police Chief Ronnie Roberts says building that strong relationship with the community starts at a young age. If you start in child daycare centers, uh, elementary schools where they begin to see the officer and working with the officer and teaching some of the children that are coming up in these schools. And it's about building those relationships. It's so important. Bruce Stone hopes other communities can learn from Louisa County. Many times we see police, we don't know them. But if we can look at them and talk to them and build a relationship, then it makes it a lot easier when we have to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. The goal at the end of the day is to keep everyone safe. We want us just to be able to come together to reason, not necessarily to always agree on everything, because we can agree to disagree and still be friends. Louisa Law Enforcement wants to host more events like this one in the future to give opportunities to more people to ask questions. Victoria Rezolo live in our Charlottesville newsroom tonight. Thank you, Victoria. The Western Albemarle Rescue Squad is, uh, has a new truck that it says will save lives and time, especially in an emergency. The heavy rescue truck features state-of-the-art equipment, including heavy-duty entry kits, air pumps, and foam storage. The truck took about three years to create. The squad's chief says it allows crews to perform multiple rescues at a time. This heavy rescue vehicle is not a fire truck, but it is able to respond to emergencies involving fires. A Charlottesville organization is helping people get the most out of broken items lying around the house. The third Seaville Time Bank Repair Cafe was held this afternoon at Ix Park. People came to get all kinds of broken gadgets from vacuum cleaners to computers fixed for free. More than 70 volunteers donated their time and expertise to help keep these items from just getting tossed in the trash. The next repair cafe is planned for March. Boy Scouts clean up a littered area around an Albemarle County school. Plus, a Charlottesville musician discovers his true voice while undergoing treatment for cancer. We'll share his story.
And more comfortable high temperatures tomorrow afternoon, middle and upper 60s. A lot of sunshine, lighter breezes. We'll start next week comfortable, and then it cools back off again. I'll show it to you coming up. The Virginia football team tries to pick up a conference win against its oldest rival. We will have highlights and post-game reaction from the game against the Tar Heels. That's later in sports.